Hi, uh, it's Father Dan here. We are welcoming you to re-entering into, after COVID, back into altar serving. And so what we thought today, what we wanted to do was put together a training tape so that you could feel confident uh, when you come back to altar serve. And I'm really grateful to Carter Stuvitz and Reed and Joe and Connor for coming here and being uh, so helpful. Actually, it's kind of funny because actually Reed was Jesus this year in our uh, Stations of the Cross and Carter was Jesus six years ago. So I have two Jesuses today. I'm very overwhelmed. Anyway, we're going to have fun with this as we always do. Uh, one thing I'd like to say before we get started, it's really a privilege to become an altar server. You are closer to the mystery of God than anyone else and being called by God to assist in the sanctuary is a privilege. And so we take it very seriously. Um, we have fun with it, but we're still very serious about what we do up there. And the altar servers are very important because they are not only there to assist the priest and the deacon uh, up in the sanctuary, but they're also helping the community pray by their actions and their words and their movements, it all contributes to the one mass. And so it's really, I am really grateful and overwhelmed by my altar servers, and I am glad um, that you're here or that you will be here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move to the back. We're gonna just get started by showing how we line up, how we enter into church, and what the positions are. So let's get started. All right. Well, here we are in the narthex of the church, and this is where it always begins. It's almost like a space before you enter into the church. It just kind of silences us before we enter into the church itself. And this is where we prepare and get ready to walk, enter into church. The first person always in the procession, unless there's incense, is the crossbearer. So Carter would be right there. He'd be first. So the crossbearer is always first. It's important when you do hold the cross, Carter, would you turn towards the camera for a second? When you hold the cross up when you're walking through the church, you don't want to let it go down, but rather you lift it high. So the first one is Carter. The second uh, is the uh, candle bearers, okay? The candle bearers usually uh, always, there's two, and they always stand shoulder to shoulder. They're almost like a piece of string connected to the two, and they know that. And so they walk together, they're always together, and last is our fourth, and our fourth is always the person who can fill in different roles uh, up there. All right, so as we enter, as you can see, they're all lined up, they're not on top of each other, but actually they're a distance apart. The pace that you're gonna move at is a relaxed pace, not a fast pace. It's really important for servers not to move too quick because when you move like this, it's jarring to the people in the pews. So whenever you move in the sanctuary, you move with ease, okay? And that's the same way you enter into the church. As you can see, Carter's lifting the cross high. The candle bearers keep their, their candles up. Carter will take a turn to the right. Then the candle bearers to the left. Our fourth server to the right. The deacon enters the sanctuary. The priest remains standing until the book of the Gospels is placed on the altar. At that point, he will genuflect. As you can see, my server over here genuflected because he's not carrying anything. These guys have candles. Carter has the cross. And it's the idea that if you're not carrying anything, then you have to genuflect or do a profound bow. If you're carrying something, you don't do anything. So then once that happens, the priest will go into the sanctuary and the servers begin to move to take their spots. So the servers will come up at this point. They've now dropped off their candles and cross and they take their seats. They genuflect, which is really wonderful because it's a sign of reverence to Jesus in the tabernacle and into the space that they're entering. So they take their seats. The priest is already standing here. Deacon is over here. And the Mass begins. And usually, it's very important for servers to know 
the flow of the mass, what comes next, so that they're already ahead of it in their head. So right away the priest begins in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, he greets the people, and then he goes right into the penitential act. After the penitential act comes the Gloria, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. After the Gloria, he goes into the closing prayer and he says out loud, let us pray. At that point, the server would be moving to get the book of the, uh, the Roman Missal. And he would put it like, Carter, Carter, could you stop for just a second? You see how Carter has it resting on his chest? That's always great because it, is it, it's a heavy book, isn't it? So when it's resting on his chest, it, it allows him to take the weight. So he puts it that way and he comes over to the priest. As you notice, he didn't just hang over here. He went forward, he stopped, and then he moved to the priest. Perfect. That's what we want because it's when you take those curves and you look like you're moving, it's not, it doesn't give the reverence that the sanctuary should have during Mass. So then Carter comes forward, right to about right over here, and then the priest will open the book to where the reading is. And then he will go right into the final reading. And at the end, uh, he says, forever and ever, amen. And then he'll probably close the book. And then Carter, the altar server, will go back to take his seat. And then we would sit down. Altar servers in the back would sit down. And we stay seated. The first is the uh, first reading, which is usually from the Old Testament, except for at Easter time. The second after the first reading is the responsorial psalm, which is the singing uh, of the psalm. After the responsorial psalm is the second reading, which is from the New Testament. At the end of the second reading, when the lector says, the word of the Lord, the two candle bearers stand up. So you stand up right at, the, they finish the reading and they say the word of the Lord. They know that is their cue to go in the back and to get the candles. They will get the candles and then right after that we're going to start into the gospel. So of course we have the gospel acclamation. So Alleluia, Alleluia. And the deacon usually comes up to the priest. The priest prays over the deacon and he gives him the blessing. And the deacon goes and gets the gospel, book of gospels. He'll lift it. Now you see the altar servers are already in their place, right? They're ready for him. He finishes and then Joe, you turn and go. And he'll go right behind them. You kind of sense him behind. Soon as he enters behind, they start to move, okay? They go around the uh, sanctuary. The pace that they're moving at is pretty good. It's a slow pace. It's not running because the gospel, the acclamation lasts quite a long time. So it gives them time for them to get over there. So the guys come forward, as you can see, they stop, they turn, move together. Joe goes all the way across, Reed is right there. Joe takes a four stop turn, so he doesn't rush it. The deacon comes forward and everything's in place, ready for the gospel, really clean. You can see the guy standing there, he finishes the reading of the gospel and he says, the gospel of Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the deacon finishes, they turn, they step two steps forward, move down together, and they're back to put their candles away. So they go back after they put their candles down, then they just go and sit down, and then the deacon's going to give a homily. Joe, you're going to give a homily? No. <laughs> after the homily, the priest will stand, go back to his seat, the deacon will be here, and um, we go into the profession of faith. After the profession of faith is the, uh, the reading of the petitions. 
after the petitions is the setting of the altar, okay? So after the final petition, and we all say, Lord, hear our prayer. Priest has a short prayer. The priest and the deacon will sit down. This is time for the guys back here to get to work, right? So Carter's going to lead this, okay, because he knows what to do. The two things that are important to bring over are the tray containing all the vessels and also um, the uh, book of the uh, Roman Missal. At that point, when it's all done, the deacon and priest will come up. The priest will probably open the book to get it set to where he wants to, and they'll do a little bow, and then they're going to go down to get the gifts. They will bring forward the uh, gifts of bread and wine, and we will take it, and I will hand it to you, I will hand it to you, or I might hand it to you. Okay? Probably I'd hand it to him. At that point, I usually bless, bow, and go. All right, as the uh, deacon and the priest and the altar server go down to get the gifts, the remaining altar servers get the wine, I'm sorry, the water and, the, and, and a uh, towel and a basin. And they stand here on the side like this. After that, the priest will come over. He says prayers over the bread and the wine. So after the priest bows, says a prayer, he'll step over to the altar servers and he'll say, Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. The altar server pours the water over his hands. You don't have to be shy, but you don't have to flood them either. <laughs> and then afterwards, he'll reach over here. As you can see, Joe has his hands like this with it folded nicely over. Makes it just really easy for the priest to grab and to do that and then to give right back like that. As a sign of respect, we always do what? We bow to each other. Whenever we do an action together, we just give a silent reverence to each other, appreciate each other. At that point, the priests go back to the altar, and the altar servers will go back. Once the priest is up here again, he talks to the community, and the prayers go back and forth, and we go into the Eucharistic prayers. Once the Eucharistic prayers have begun, right, in the, right at the holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, at that point when that is being sung, the altar servers come over here, At that point, during the Holy Holy, everybody's singing. Once it stops, immediately the altar servers go down on their knees. Okay? Right next to Carter is the bells. Okay? So he is going to be the bell ringer. Okay. So after the priest uh, uh, begins the Eucharistic prayers, at one point he consecrates, actually he calls down the Holy Spirit, which is called the Epiclesis. And when he does that, he does this with his hands. Once he does his hands over, that's my cue, that he's going to ring the bell three times. Then he finishes, the priest continues, then he says the prayer over the bread, which is to become the body of Christ. And as he says the prayer, he finishes, and as he finishes, the cue to the altar server is the lifting. He genuflects and returns, and he says a prayer over the wine, which is to become the precious blood of Jesus. Once the consecration is completed, he will lift the chalice up, and that is the cue again. It's important when you're ringing the bells, uh, just like Carter does, don't be shy. You just give it that good ring. Uh, three times three is the Trinity. After the acclamation, then he goes into the rest of the Eucharistic prayer. The altar servers remain kneeling during the rest of the Eucharistic prayer. At the great amen, when the bread, and uh, really the host and the precious blood is lifted, and the great amen happens, that completes that, and the altar servers all stand up, okay? 
now that they're standing, they don't have to move at this point, okay? They're just going to remain here. At that point, I will, you know, do the extension of peace to the peace. We say the Our Father, and then we go into the extension of peace. At that point, we say, let us extend a sign of peace. Right now, it's just more, it's a, you normally we would shake hands or do something. Now it's just a little reverence to each other. After that, um, we go into the Eucharistic self. So they have the Lamb of God. At when everyone else kneels during, uh, after the Lamb of God, but the altar servers are gonna remain standing, okay? At that point, uh, the priest says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. And they'll say, Lord, we are not worthy to receive you. Only say the word and we shall be healed. When the priest gives out Eucharist, he'll just receive himself, he gives to the deacon, and then he will turn to the altar servers and give you Holy Communion. Once you have received Holy Communion, you go back to your seats. So after that, they'll go back and take their seats. Communion will be given out to the faithful. So as he's going down to give communion, you can just bring this tray up, lay the tray here at the end, and then just walk over close the book of the Gospels and take the book of the Gospels. Okay. He takes the book of the Gospel. This is all going on during communion. When that's over communion, the priest is going to come back and he's going to take the water and he's going to purify all the vessels and clean them. And then he'll put everything back onto the tray. Once he does that, He'll just reverence, and then he'll go back and take his seat, and of course one of the altar servers would come forward, remove the tray, okay? So at that point, we're at the end of the Mass. Um, the altar server, after he places the tray, would sit down. We usually have the, uh, it's the year of St. Joseph, so we usually do the St. Joseph prayer. At that, at the conclusion, we would stand. The priest would say, let us pray. The one who's the cross-bearer would go and get the book of the Gospels. And come over to the priest. The priest would open it, do the closing prayer. He'll finish, and then the altar server goes away, goes back. And then the priest will address the community and give the final blessing. Um, one thing I just wanted to say, this is the perfect way that Mass goes. Sometimes there's a mistake, something gets dropped, something happens. We go with the flow. So we never worry about everything. We help each other out in the sanctuary. What we want you to know is this is how it's supposed to look like, okay? At the end of Mass, after the final blessing, he will give the final blessing and he'll say, the Mass is ended, go in peace. The people will say, thanks be to God. At that point, the altar servers, at thanks be to God, are moving. So you guys are going down to get all the various candles and, and, and crosses. The music has started to play, the closing song. And we exit the same way we entered into church. So the two candle bearers are gonna come up on that side. These guys are coming up on this side and they're gonna place themselves in lining up, waiting down there. So as you can see, the guys are exiting the same way that they came into church. The priest is standing up there, giving them time to take their spots. They're gonna line up in the back in the same way that they, as they marched in. Once the priest sees them fairly done, he's gonna reverence the altar, come out, Come down. And again, the only one has to genuflect is the one server without anything. We turn around, they turn around, and then we go. So that 
pretty much is the entrance and exit to the altar servers coming into church. The only thing that we've left out, as you can see, uh, was the incense. So I think we'll get to that another time, but we'll, 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 we'll leave it here. Um, I want to thank Connor and Reed and Joe Tirico and Carter Stubitz for helping us. Um, Carter's already a sophomore in college. He was one of our original servers and he still comes back and participates and we appreciate that. So um, as do others that have already been altar servers. So if you don't know, this is Father M.M. Father M.M. is the associate here at St. Raphael's. He's in charge of the altar servers for us. <laughs> and so he will be sending letters and so forth like that to you guys as you go forward. Um, as far as coming to church, you should be at church at least, at least 15 minutes before mass. The reason is, is because sometimes there's changes and if there's changes, we have to tell you about them ahead of time, okay? So we ask you to come. Also, uh, the attire, we already have the uh, elves, as you saw, our altar servers dressed with the cross and the um, cincture. Um, that's all in the back where you guys will be dressing. We'll get more to scheduling. Your schedules, uh, you know, once the schedules come out, it is important that if you cannot make a mass, which happens to all, all of you guys, um, that you find a replacement, okay? Um, you can't leave it high and dry because then we're really letting down the Lord. Um, so we really need to make the time, the effort to get somebody to take my place if I can't be there myself, okay? Well, I thank you for watching and I can't wait to meet you in the sanctuary. All right, God bless, thank you.